what if we have some type of a constraint in our production process? Could be a bottleneck, a limited resource, anything that is a constraint on production. We need to take this into account as well. So, especially with a sales mix. We've got our contribution margin per unit is given for the two products that we make. We make a bicycle and a tricycle. And then we're also given machine hours per unit. So our constraint here is uh, one of our machines or some machinery that we're using in production. So they're giving us the hours per unit for each of these products as well. First thing I need to do is not just look at contribution margin per unit, which is a very useful figure, but when you have a constraint, you need to look at it with that constraint in mind. To do that, you need to convert the contribution margin to a contribution margin per that constraint. For us, that would be contribution margin per machine hour. So I already know that the, the bicycle is 300 for contribution margin per unit. And I know that the machine hours per unit are 0.4. So I can convert that over to contribution margin per machine hour. Just going to divide that out. So for the bicycle, that would give me $750 per machine hour. This is, again, contribution margin per machine hour because the machine is our constraint. For the tricycle, we've got a contribution margin of 250 and the machine hours per unit is 0.25. So when we divide that, that's going to give me $1,000 for our contribution margin per machine hour. Assume one way we could use this is let's assume that we're going to increase machine capacity by 500 hours. Now, if we just looked at contribution margin per unit, which one of these looks better? Which one contributes more to, to the bottom line? The bicycle looks good. It's 300 versus 250. It's a little bit more. But when we add in the data about the constraint, then we get a different picture. Because now when we convert that, the bicycle does 750, the tricycle gives us a thousand. So if we had an additional 500 hours to consider, and we're trying to figure out which product we want to use those 500 hours for, then we need to take into consideration that constraint and use these new contribution margin numbers to determine what would happen. So if we have, let's do a little, we're looking at increasing machine hours by 500. And we'll do a column for each. We'll do the bicycle and the tricycle. We're looking at increasing one of them by 500. We could split the hours and look at that as well. Just to start off and make it a little bit more simplistic, let's just look at which product we would want to do if we're going to add 500 hours to one product. So we don't want to just look at contribution margin per unit in general, we want to look at those per unit things as they apply to the constraint. So we're going to look at contribution margin per machine hour. And again, if you see up top, that was $750 for the bicycle and that was $1,000 for the tricycle. So if we apply that for 500 additional hours, then we're going to get additional contribution margin for the bicycle $375,000 and for the tricycle that's going to yield me $500,000. So if I'm picking one, I'm going to pick the tricycle because that's going to give me a larger contribution margin than the bicycle when we consider the constraint. Again, if I did this data and I didn't have that constraint considered, you'd see that the bicycle comes out looking better. But again, because we do have a constraint, we want to add that into our analysis determine that. And so when we do that conversion, then you can see that the tricycle is actually going to benefit us greater.